Dude, dudes, what is happening? Seriously. Um, I'm one for taking healthy, calculated risks, okay? Uh, for example, last year, I would have been more inclined to accept, you know, risky moves to get a Mariota, you know, because that's a common household name that has a higher potential of being a success. But I'm just not that excited about a Wentz. So the Eagles just made a trade with the Browns that could potentially turn them into the Browns. Yup, a factory of sadness, a franchise of dysfunction, a reoccurring nightmare. Oh goodness, guys, I'm honestly scared. So here's the deal. The Eagles made a trade with the Browns to get the number two overall pick in the draft. What the Eagles get is that number two spot and a fourth round pick next year. What the Browns get is our number eight pick this year, our third round pick at number 77, our fourth round pick at number 100, and our first round pick in 2017, and a second round pick in 2018. <laughs> oh, but that's not all. You need to include the Dolphins trade to get the true net cost of this pick. And that trade involved the Eagles moving from 13 to eight and giving up Byron Maxwell and Kiko Alonso. So just add that to the mix here. Now here's the issue. I mean, I get it. I know in order to win in this league, you need a good franchise quarterback. I understand that. However, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos talking about drafting a quarterback, well, the risk a lot of times outweighs the reward. So what I want to do is do a little refresher on what I did, what I discussed in that video by going through some of the past two, the past uh, drafts and the top two quarterbacks that were drafted in those drafts. So I'm going to go through it briefly and let's see what we come up with. So uh, I'm going to discount last year's draft, which was Mariota and um, Winston, um, because there's not enough time, you know, they have, we haven't, we've only seen them for a season, which is a not, not enough time to see whether they're going to be able to stick around as a franchise quarterback for that team. So I'm going to start with 2014, where we have Bortles, who's still with his team, but we also have Manziel, who is not. Um, the year before that, in 2013, we have EJ Emanuel, who's still with his team, uh, but we have Geno Smith who, yes, he's still there, but he's not starting and he's got a lot of issues. So he's not in the win category. Um, in 2012, we had Andrew Luck, who's still with the Colts. RG3, well, he's with the Browns now um, and not doing so well. So 2011, we have Cam Newton and Jake Locker who are still with their team. So those are, you know, that was a better draft, but in 2010, you had Sam Bradford and Tim Tebow, who are no longer with their teams. Um, then 2009, you have Stafford and Sanchez, okay? Uh, 2008 was a good year where you have Matt Ryan and Joe Flacco, but the two years prior to that, you ended up having Jamarcus Russell, who was the number one overall pick, uh, Brady Quinn, Vince Young, and Matt Leinart. So when you look at the numbers and how this breaks down, the way I see it is there's pretty much a 50% chance of your quarterback being a success or a bust. We're taking a huge risk here. Let me give you an example of how I view it. Now, um, I understand that if I take all my money, you know, empty my bank accounts, drive down to Vegas, put it all on red, there's a 50% chance that I double my money and hey, I'm a winner, I'm feeling good, um, life is great, right? But on the flip side of things, if I don't win, if it ends up being black, uh, well, I end up broke, 
ruining my life, getting, you know, evicted from my home on the verge of homelessness. Um, I begin to enter a deep depression and, you know, it's a whole downward spiral from there that's really hard to dig yourself out of. So that's how I look at this trade. Is the risk worth the reward? Um, only time will tell. And honestly, what's done is done, right? And now it's just a waiting game. But that's where I'm at with this. I'm not happy with this move. I've been saying the entire time that I do not want us to risk a lot to try and draft a quarterback. And guess what we just did? Um, so all I'm really hoping for at this point is that the Browns never ending uh, curse of bad luck will still apply to them and us being involved would make them the loser and us the winner. So I'm hoping the laws of the, you know, of the way the, <laughs> the Cleveland Browns, you know, factory of sadness works will play in our favor but <laughs> I can't count on that. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is essentially the Eagles are making a Vegas style gamble. If it works out great, I'll pat everybody on the back and we'll continue moving forward with this franchise. That'll be a good place to be. But on the flip side, if it doesn't work out, oh, we are so screwed, so screwed. Um, <laughs> what we're essentially doing is we're sa we sacrificed players and draft picks that have that could have potentially filled some voids in some very necessary positions. Like, what's the point in having a quarterback if you don't have an O line to protect them? You know, they're never going to be able to throw the ball. Oh God, we're putting all our eggs in one basket here. So I guess. I'm just gonna be a nervous wreck until we can wait it out and see what happens. Um, Cause only time will tell. So we gotta let it play out on its own. At this point, what's done is done. But I was talking to the homie, uh, Steven Puga, shout out to you. Cause he called it. He said the Eagles have been whining and dining Carson Wentz. Um, he's definitely the quarterback that the Eagles want. Um, so, looks like that'll be our dude. Um, more than likely, as long as, you know, the Rams draft Goff or whatever his name is. But um, <coughs> what I want to do, if I have time next week, I want to do a video on kind of like a draft bio of this guy. Because uh, we're obviously going to get him. So, uh, I want to see what we're giving up the farm for, so stay tuned. Um, and I still have my Fandle video to do, but I got distracted by all this, so um, so that will be my next video. But anyways, let me know how you feel about this. Again, to me, it's just a gamble that it could go either way, but if it goes the wrong way, it's going to be really detrimental to to our organization for a really long time. Like, this will set us five years back. Just imagine that dark, dark time of no success, no hope. Oh God, this has to work out, bottom line. It has to, um, cause I can't go through that, all right? I can't, I can't do it. So <laughs> let me know your thoughts, your feelings. Um, if you are happy about this trade, which I have yet to see anybody happy about this trade. And honestly, I'm normally the optimist, but in this case, I can't, I can't get down with it. Um, tell me why and tell me what it is about Wentz that you like or what potential you see. Uh, Cause now it's time to research, research a boy. Um, so that's it. It's your girl daily with PhiladeliaEagles.com signing off. E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles!